All right, we are going to go ahead and review pedigrees. And by the end of this video tutorial, you should be able to use a pedigree to determine if a trait is dominant or recessive. And you should be able to use a pedigree to determine the genotypes of individuals. So we'll come back to these objectives at the end so you can check whether you are ready to move on or whether you need to review part of the tutorial again. So just for the basics, here is an example of a pedigree. And a pedigree shows you the family history for a trait. So it tells you who has this trait and who doesn't. The trait could be a certain hair color, it could be a disease, it could be an eye color, it could be almost anything. The pedigree can also show you whether the trait is dominant or recessive. So in this pedigree, people who have the trait, again, whatever it is, are filled in. So in this pedigree, for example, Sue, Joe, Jim, and Tim all have the trait, and none of the other people in the family do. So people without the trait have circles that are not filled in. So go ahead and just check yourself, make sure you know the difference between people who have it and people who do not. If people are connected with a straight line, um, as it shows you right over here, are married. If they're connected with a line that goes up and over, like shown over here in the key, it goes up, over, and back down. That means that they're siblings. So take a look at Tim and Lori on the pedigree. They're right here. And figure out, based on this key, which relationship do they have. So the way you can figure it out, because their line goes up and over and down, Instead of just being straight in between, Tim and Lori are brother and sister. Take a look at Lori and Joe. Try to figure out how they are related to each other. This might take you a few more steps. So I would start down here with Lori, and if I go up one step to Jim and Kay, I can see that Jim and Kay are her parents. They're married, Tim and Lori are their kids. So if Jim is her dad, and then I see how Jim is connected to Joe, they seem like they are brothers. So Joe is her brother's dad, or is her dad's brother, then Joe must be Lori's uncle try the same thing for Tim and Sue. Okay, go ahead and pause the video if you need more time. So Tim, let's see, you're going to start down here with Tim, go up and find his parents who are Jim and Kay, go up one more level to find Sue. So Sue is the mom of Jim, who is the dad of Tim. So if Sue is the mom of her dad, Sue is, is Tim's grandmother. All right, so for some of the other things a pedigree can tell us, if you look at a pedigree and you see, as we do here, two parents who both have the trait, and I know they have the trait because their circles are filled in, and I look down at their kids, and at least one of their kids does not have the trait, it's going to be dominant every single time. So again, you only have to see this once on the pedigree. So it could be a whole giant pedigree. And if I find one spot where there's a parent with the disease and another parent with the disease and a child who does not have it, then the trait that they're showing us has to be dominant. The opposite is true for recessive. If I look at a pedigree, and I see two parents, like right here, who do not have the trait, they're not filled in. And then I look down and at least one of their kids, here we see two, 
does have the trait, it's recessive. You can kind of think of that as skipping a generation. So none of their parents have it. It didn't show up at all, and then all of a sudden the trait shows up in their kids. That means it must be recessive. So go ahead and take a look at this pedigree. And based on those two key points we just reviewed, figure out whether this pedigree is dominant or recessive and how you can tell. Go ahead and pause the video if you need extra time. So what I see when I look at this pedigree, I don't see anywhere where both parents have the disease. One parent has it here, none of them here, none of them here. So I definitely can't say for sure that it's, res that it's dominant. But I do see a place where two parents do not have it and some of their children do. So these two parents don't have it, but some of their children do. So that automatically tells me that this is a recessive trait. Doesn't have to be everywhere in the pedigree, I just have to find one spot with two parents who don't have it and a child who does. So now that I know this pedigree is recessive, I can actually start to figure out the genotypes of individuals in the pedigree. So whenever we're looking at genotypes, we always want to start by writing down our three options. Choose any letter you want. So we'll start with big A, big A, big A, little a, and little a, little a. Then I have to figure out for those genotypes which ones have the disease and which ones don't. So if it's recessive, I remember that little a's are recessive and only this person right here is going to have the disease. So big A, big A won't have it big A little a won't have it because this big A is going to be dominant but little a little a will have the disease. Now my next step is to try to write these genotypes onto the pedigree. It's always easiest to start with the people um, who are little a little a. So in this case those are the people with the disease which means these three circles that are filled in all of those people have the disease so I know their genotypes are all going to be little a, little a, little a, little a, little a, little a. My next step is to try and figure out the ones that are not filled in. I know those could be either big A, big A and have no disease or big A, little a. So since I'm not sure yet, I'm actually going to write a big A in a blank next to every single one of the circles or squares that's not filled in. So now I have to try and figure out what is that second letter? Do they have two big A's or a big A and a little a? So the easiest way to do it is to find someone who's little a, little a and figure out where those little a's came from. So one little a must have come from the dad and one little a must have come from the mom because this child got their two little a's, one from mom, one from dad. So then I can fill in those two. They have to be big A, little a, big A, little a. So let's see, why don't you go ahead now and try to figure out um, the genotypes of these three children down here. Think about the way we just did it for that child, for those parents, uh, review it if you need to, and figure out the genotypes of these three. Go ahead and pause the video if you need a little bit more time to figure it out. But I'm going to explain how I would have found this. So I know that this parent up here is big A, big A, or little a, little a, excuse me. And they have to give one of their little a's to each of their children because half of your genes go to each of your children. So one little a has to go to this child, a little a has to go to this child, and a little a has to go to this child. So now I can fill in that all of these children also have to be big A, little a, big A, little a, just like these two parents over here. Um, for the rest of the people in the pedigree, 
I can't necessarily figure out whether they're big A little a or big A blank or sorry big A big A so I would leave those the way they are and if it asks me a question about one of those I would say I just don't have enough information to figure it out all right the very last thing a pedigree can show us is whether a trait is sex linked or autosomal a sex linked trait means that many many more males than females are going to have it if we look over at the key it's going to remind us that males are the squares and the females are the circles if we look over here we do have three males who have it and only one female but that's actually not a big enough difference to say that a trait is sex linked you have to find a lot a lot of males who have it and practically no females who have it so that's very rarely going to be the case in a pedigree. For an autosomal trait, that means that it's more or less the same number of males and females who have it. does not have to be exactly the same. In this pedigree, it's not exactly the same. But 3 compared to 1 is not very different. So this trait is autosomal, which means it's just a regular trait. It's not on the X chromosome. Males and females both get it. So, that's the end of the tutorial. To check yourself, these are the skills you should be able to do. And if there's any part of this that you are not yet fully comfortable with, you should go back and rewatch that part of the video. So check if you can. Identify the individuals in a pedigree who have or don't have the trait. Identify whether a pedigree is dominant or recessive. Identify the genotypes of individuals in the pedigree and identify where a pedigree shows an autosomal or sex-linked trait. So check all of this over. If you feel comfortable, then you are probably ready to show that you have mastered the pedigree's objective. If you feel uncomfortable with any section, just go back and re-watch that part or re-watch the whole thing if you want. And if you have any questions, let me know.